Hey folks, Merry Christmas. I have a special video for you today. Some of you may be aware of YouTube user RoadGeek or Billy Core, who got his childhood computer back at one point, the Packer Bell Legend 822. You also remember that I bought one of those from him, the one that wasn't exactly like his childhood one was, but was similar. <clears throat> well, I have found my childhood computer. I found one that works, at least semi. And uh, we're going to take a look at it. I have a whole, s I have it set up here on my table, so let's start with the whole setup. This is the keyboard I got with it. This is quite a mush board, very much a mush board. And uh, it's from the mid to late 90s. It came with these at the time. And uh, got it with the machine. I also got one of the, uh, the mice with it the, from that era, but I'm not using it because I can't really be bothered to go fish it out. Has your ADB port on the bottom underneath the uh, thing there. This is called the Apple Design Keyboard, if any of you guys remember that. This is the type of keyboard that I used when I was a kid. I did not use a trackball when I was a kid. I used a traditional ball mouse, but this is the trackball I have set up here. It's a Kensington Orbit. This thing is very nice. It's an ADB. There were ADB and serial versions of these available back in the day. Very nice trackball. <clears throat> the monitor we're going to be using is this Dell one here. Uh, it's a 17-inch monitor that does, I think, 1280 by 1024, and it happens to do the odd resolution that this Mac puts out, so that's what we're going to be using. So this is my childhood computer. As you can see, it's one of the boring beige Macs of the late 90s, right before Steve Jobs came back to Apple. This Mac is from 96, 97, somewhere around there. The Performa 6400 is a similar machine to this except that it's a, just a lower end product. The Power Mac on the other hand <clears throat> is what I had as you can see. The Power Macintosh 6500-250 is what I had here. I'm not quite sure what I had as a kid whether it was a 225 or what but the clock speed of the CPU is hardly a, a factor at this point. Now these machines are kind of interesting at least to me. Uh, some of them had a zip drive up here others don't. This Mine when I was a kid didn't so I made sure to get that. I haven't even cleaned this case up yet. It's got marks and junk all over it, so I still need to clean it up. But the restoration process is only just beginning on this computer, so that's probably going to be the last thing I do. I usually like to have a working machine before I bother putting a bunch of elbow grease into it. What I can tell you is that this machine does work, has a hard drive in it. I bought it um, non-working condition. Although, this is because somebody tried to put a PC video card in here. Somebody had an ATI card uh, in this machine that just flat out didn't work with it. Uh, let me see if I can find that real quick. This is the card I found in the machine. Uh, it's an ATI Rage Pro Turbo PCI, which is a good card. But it doesn't appear to be a Mac version or anything like that. I don't see any... Uh, markings or any labels on it that signify that it was for a Mac. It is for, uh, from the time period though, 1997. So I found this in it. Once I took this card out and used the onboard video, the computer actually worked. So I'm thinking that this was really the source of the problems all along. Um, I could try putting it back in at some point, but I, mm, I think this was probably why it wasn't booting. But for now, let's take you around a tour of the machine. Of course, on the front of the machine here, uh, some of these had a zip drive up top here. This one doesn't, which is exactly how my machine was back in the day. has a SCSI CD-ROM drive, 1.44 meg floppy drive, an IR port, volume buttons, a headphone jack, and there's a speaker underneath, which is interesting. If you have speakers plugged in, it acts as a subwoofer to these, to the speakers that you have plugged in, but if you don't, that's the system speaker. It's a big tower. Uh, your typical beige tower of the mid to late 90s. Now the onboard video is up here, and what I had to do was get an adapter that adapts the Apple connector to VGA. And that connector has a ton of... E um, of EGA, of um, dip switches on it. So I leave them all in the on position, and that seems to do just fine. 
you can see the production date here. It is uh, October 8th, 1997. So this computer is literally over 20 years old, just. 5.41 p.m. That was right at the end of the work, I guess. At the end here you get some vents. You get your ADB connector for the keyboard and mouse, of course. You get serial ports for a printer and modem. A SCSI port. Uh, some audio jacks here, microphone and uh, speakers. Looks like there's a knockout plug there for something. Not really sure what. Uh, and there's a modem down here, which is a card. You can change this out. I'm guessing for different modems or for Ethernet or something. Not sure. And then you get two PCI slots there. And what's nice about this is it's of the age where you can plug a monitor into that. So that's kind of nice. It is a uh, is a linear power supply, as you can see. Well, maybe not linear, but it's a it's a not a switching power supply. It, of course, has a voltage selector. Oh yeah, you have the Kensington lock down there. Almost forgot about that. The machine's a little dirty, as you can see. So yeah. Now this machine, this Mac, is of an age where a lot of it was modular. Let me demonstrate real quick. You could literally pull the board out of the back of the machine and set it down somewhere. Here you go. Here's the machine. That's the whole thing. There's some more stuff in there. Like there's a fan, there's a power supply right there, there's cables and whatnot. That's the slot the motherboard plugs into. Yeah, there you go. But here's the motherboard itself. Give you a good look at it there. You have RAM here, some more RAM there, and your cache DIMM right there. Um, this cache DIMM could be used to upgrade the machine to a G3, which I will be doing this machine. I happen to have a Power VR. I think it's a Power VR card or something like that for this machine. I'll go grab it later and we can take a look at it. This machine, like many others of the time, used a riser card for PCI slots. So this is where I ended up finding the video card in this machine. This uses a Rayovac clock battery. It is a Rayovac 840 battery. Of course it's dead. I have a replacement on the way that is simply a battery box. It uses three double A's that plugs into that and typically you affix uh, the velcro on top of this graphics chip here so there you go the chip is 250 as you can see it says IBM 250 megahertz there of course IBM made the chip there's the chip right there with its uh, little heat sink and little fan there <laughs> Looks like there's a port also right here for the AV models, video in. That's probably what this is for up here, is for the AV models of it, since the video in ends up being right there. As far as this blanking plate, I'm really not sure. It looks like it comes out right there, so I'm guessing other boards would have more ports on them, possibly. Not really sure. Uh, yeah, that's the bare essentials of the machine. In case you wonder what the Apple monitor connector looked like, it looks like that. When I was a kid and had this type of computer, I had the monitor that would actually plug into that. It was not a VGA monitor. So, that was kind of nice. Just in case I didn't show it before, here's that modem on a card. I think you could replace this with an Ethernet card. I'm not totally sure but that'd be really nice if you could I'd like to get one of those not sure who makes this modem looks like it's an Apple modem it's a 56k modem though as it was 97 that was probably what you would have wanted here's the G3 upgrade card now this is supposed to go in a cache dim socket which looks like it fits right into that one there here it is. This is an Interware G3 upgrade card. I'm not quite sure how fast this is. Oh, it's a 240 megahertz model. It's made by VPower, oddly enough. It's a VPower PFG3240 M-540944. 
I do have the drivers for this somewhere. So I'm probably going to stick this thing in here and try to use it. Okay, this is what the cash dim socket looks like. It has three distinct parts to it. Here's the cash that came in the machine. Which seems to work fine. Okay, I've spent a ton of time troubleshooting this thing, and oh boy, this thing was acting weird. I've taken the, the dead battery out. Uh, I thought that was causing some erratic behavior. Uh, turns out that my Apple design keyboard that I got with the machine appears to be dead. Uh, the power button on it doesn't work anymore. And when I plug it in, I get a white window. So what I've done is I pulled out my Apple Extended Keyboard 2, which I thankfully have, which is an ADB. It's also a mechanical keyboard, which is nice. Out switches. Uh, but this is the only working ADB keyboard I have now. That's kind of sad. I should probably get another Apple Design keyboard for this thing at some point. But this will do for now. Uh, so what I've done is hooked up some speakers here. This is the whole setup we're going to use. I have this Dell monitor here that accepts the sex, that accepts that uh, the odd resolution that this thing puts out. Um, I have put my G, my V Power G3 upgrade card in there that I showed earlier, and uh, hopefully it boots with that installed. I got it to boot normally, so let's see if it boots with that installed, and we can just take finally take a tour of this machine. All right, we're booted up. Video. This thing has Mac OS 9.1 on it, which I think is the highest it can run. This computer, as far back, is being used as far back as 2003, from what I can tell by looking at the dates on some of this, the documents and whatever in there. So, I would say around 2003. Whoever owned this upgraded. Um, I think it was used at a school, from what I can see. It has some software on it that had, that um, leads me to believe that it was part of the edutainment revolution in schools that happened in the 90s. This computer did come with a CD and the drive as well. Arthur's Computer Adventure which I think still works. It comes with a copy of AOL <laughs> from the year 2000. So there you go. Now you can see this thing is taking forever to boot up. This is normal for machines back in these days. Um, this is not because I put the G3 card in there. In fact, I don't have the extensions installed for that card. So it will only use the cache that's on that card and not the processor on the card itself. So that, I think, is a subject for a later video. I kind of want to take a look at the machine as is, without any of that stuff installed. Uh, I'm going to image this hard drive once I'm done. I hope the text-to-speech works on this, because it has an amusing way of saying time. I guess not. It used to... Uh, text-to-speech used to come up, and it would pronounce time as ten. Your clock is not set to the correct ten. In fact, assuming that actually works, oh boy, I think we're frozen. Yeah, it's frozen. This machine seems to do this every now and then. It'll just 
kind of freeze up for no reason. Okay. Okay, we're booted up with the G3 card inserted without the battery inserted at a desktop. I think definitely what I need to do is clean those contacts inside, and we'll get to that once I restore the machine. First, let's show you what this machine's all about. This is Mac OS 9.1. Uh, looks like there is 96 megs of RAM in here, which is quite high for uh, a machine of this age. Uh, probably good enough for the internet. Uh, Mac OS itself is using about 16 megs of it at the moment. Uh, it has 97 megabytes of uh, swap, or virtual memory, as they used to call it. Now let's go to the system profiler and show you what actually is in it. So, here we go. External L2 cache, so it does see that G3 card, which is nice. Um, power Macintosh 6500 series. Keyboard type, it actually says Apple Extended Keyboard, so it does see it. Uh, QuickTime 412, Carbon Lib 111. It's Mac OS 9.1, that's kind of what you would expect. Uh, what else have we got? This is a Power PC 603 EV processor and it's running at 250 megahertz. So this is before the G3 was a thing. Now, I do have the G3 on the cache DIMM card, as I mentioned earlier, but that does not have its extension installed, so it's using the 603E at the moment. Now, what do we have for devices? So, we have a hard drive, obviously. That is a Western Digital 4 gigabyte drive. Very small. Those are getting hard to find now, so that's kind of nice to have. But the nice thing is it uses IDE for hard drives, so for preservation purposes, that's really nice. What's not so nice is that the CD-ROM is SCSI, as was typical for Macs back in those days. It's a Matsushita uh, drive, though, and those tend to last a while. Um, it does read burn disks, which is nice. So not a bad drive, but it's SCSI, so you've got to keep that in mind for this machine. What's the display card, huh? What's the built-in video? Wow, that doesn't really give you much information. I know it's an ATI something. I can't remember what ATI card it is. Uh, what about the display itself? So this thing is running at 1152 by 870 at 256 colors. That's why I needed a monitor that was bigger than 1024 by 768 for this demonstration, this Dell monitor here, so that I could display that. It uses some odd resolutions sometimes on the back. Now there's a bunch of control panels in here. We have disk light, file saver, extensions manager, Mac TCP DNR. It's a bit different. So there's some more than you usually see there. Oh wow, there are a lot of extensions. 140 extensions. Not all of them are enabled. There's some Epson stuff in there, some Microsoft stuff, Norton Crash Guard, Stuff It Engine. Uh, there are so many extensions in there, it's unbelievable. Looks like not every single one's enabled, but extensions were the name of the game with the Macintosh back in the day. So this is Mac OS 9. How can I move this thing up and down? There we go. Move the control strip down to the bottom. This was your interface to control things like the volume, for example. The microphone, of course. Uh, like w which source it was. You had your printers down here. Let's see what it picks up. doesn't appear to be picking anything up. You can change your resolution down here. This is running at an odd resolution, 1152 by 870 at 75 hertz. So I'm lucky this Dell monitor can uh, figure that out and use it. 256 colors, 256 grays, and thousands of colors is what the video card can do. You have your keychain controls, your file sharing, and of course the CD drive. 
you could. This is how you would play CDs on the Mac back in the day. I would stick in an audio CD and play it using this little tab here on my G4 Cube, and I'll, even on this machine as well. Back when I was a kid, and that's what I would use. You can also turn Apple Talk on or off. So that control strip was really your main interface there. Uh, now, I told you before that when we took a look at this, when it starts up, it will say TEM instead of TIME. Let's see if I can demonstrate that because I just find it very uh, amusing. So, what I used to do is go into simple text, write things up like This is basically what it would say. Your computer's clock is not set to the correct 10. 10. 10. That's a very interesting way to pronounce time. Ten. <laughs> Old text to speech is kind of amusing sometimes. When I first heard that, I thought it was kind of hilarious, but now it's now it's not quite as funny as it was, but that's that, that's still amusing to me. So, what do we have on this computer? Acrobat Reader 4.0. So, of course, you can read your PDFs on the Mac. Look at that. <laughs> 1999 is when that's from. About 18 years ago. Almost 19 years ago, since it's nearly 2018. So, let me open the README file here. There you go. March 8th, 1999 is when this is from. I'm sure this was downloaded off the internet or something. So what are the requirements? You needed system 712, 4 megs of RAM, 8 megs of space, and uh, 50 megs of space for the Asian funds. So hmm, there you go. And in Q, quit that. After Dark 4.0 is on here, but I don't think it works because all I see is the manual, unfortunately. After Dark is funny though. I, I love After Dark. Anarchy Pro, I think, is a filer, so let's check it out. Stairway Software. Oh, it needs the internet. Stop it. No. Now, what would happen with these? I used to use remote access for dialing up sometimes in Mac OS 9, and it, when it would wait for the PPP termination, it would take forever. PPP is dial-up, essentially. And it ties up the whole machine, because, oh, because Mac OS, classic Mac OS was such a, uh, it really hadn't changed since the 80s all that much. Um, it took a while. It, it failed to initialize Mac TCP or Open Transport. Open transport, wow. Well. So I'm going to guess that was some sort of online filer. I don't know if that was for, um, uh, you know, a school network or what, but I would guess it would be. Christy and Dave's finances. Now, when would this be from? If the, uh, if the control click menu would come up any faster. Get info. This was created in February 20th, 2003, so that was really the last time this computer was really in use, I would say. Looks like software that people would use in their spare time and both for, uh, you know, work and play. Now you look in the Mac Applications folder, Mac OS 9. This is something that Mac OS 9 would do. It would separate the applications in Mac OS 9 from Mac OS 10 during the transitionary era which is something we'll be taking a look at at some point on a different computer. Uh, but as you can see, this has a lot of the stuff you would normally find, like uh, Internet Explorer 5. I used to use this browser on a daily basis in the early 2000s, and I used to use it to play things like ga uh, Flash games, like Tank Wars, on places like FlashPlayer.com. Look at that. I used to use this daily. Oh, uh, look at that. Now it's going to try to connect to a dial-up service, and of course that's just not going to be there anymore, so we got to wait for this PPP termination again. 
ay, 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 ay. Now, when I had one of these back in, you know, the late 90s to the to early 2000s, I would say it was mostly the late 90s that I was using um, this particular computer. I didn't have access to the internet, but I was using this software uh, in the early 2000s. But it could run on it could run on something like this, no problem. Another PPP termination. That, uh, after this machine, I had a G4 Cube, which is what I ran most of the stuff on. So, this version of Internet Explorer, I used to use for years, back in the day. Uh, in fact, eBay was what I used on there. My first time on eBay was on the IE5 for the Macintosh. Um, and that's how I ended up with an Atari 2600, thanks to, you know, using the Internet on an old computer like this. But look at that. Oh, dear God. How many times am I going to have to wait for this? This is just torture. I should just close Internet Explorer. Or get rid of the PPP configuration. I used to have a bunch of stuff in the bookmarks there, like Live Homepage, Apple Computer, Apple Support, MSN, Office for Macintosh. It was... It was interesting back in those days. Let's get out of here before it starts annoying me about PPP configuration again. Now I've got to go to TCP IP and change that to the Mac IP server. Okay, so maybe now we can look at Internet Explorer, save it, without the thing dialing up every five minutes. Okay, Internet Explorer. Launches pretty quickly. Of course, it's not going to work because, uh, well, you know, it's from 20 years ago. So this is version 5 Macintosh edition. This was copyrighted from the year 2000. So this is around the time I was using it on a different machine on my G4 Cube that I had at the time. I never, I never touched the internet on my Power Mac 6500. But this is, it would have looked basically the same if I had kept on using it. Um, oh wow, there's a lot in the bookmarks. Singular wireless. <laughs> Chip chats online. Uh, lots of wood carving, it looks like. Whoever, whoever owned this computer is really into uh, wood carving. Oh, there's some adult sites on here. <laughs> right under a teacher, right under teacher lesson plans. There's an adult's content search engine. <laughs> that is funny. Now what else is in here? Anything truly hilarious? Not really. Some Apple Care stuff. Looks like a lot of wood carving, some porn stuff, and uh, teaching stuff. So. Sounds like a pretty normal person in the late 90s. They have their job, they have their hobby, and they have their uh, relations. <laughs> so, people, people, times really haven't changed that much, as you can see. Now, what else do we have for Internet Utilities? Aladdin. That was an interesting util utility. Aladdin made um, Stuff It Expander. Now, Stuff It Expander was a very important program to have on the Mac, and it still is today on older Macs like this, because uh, that lets you, un that lets you uh, de um, unarchive .sit files and .zip files and things like that on the Mac, which is really nice. You get a phone call. That was a spam call. Anyway, Stuff It Expander. That's an important program to have on the old Macs. Let's go into the Internet folder. Looks like you ha on this computer we have IE5, as we did before. Outlook Express. No, oh, dear, I hope there aren't email accounts in there. I'm not going to open that in case there are. There's also Netscape Communicator, which... Uh, uh, Netscape AOL Instant Messenger. Wow. Dare I open that? Well, if there's anything compromising, I'll get rid of it. AOL Instant Messenger has been shut down. This is one that's from 1999. <laughs> 
Remember AIM guys? XX, your name, XX. Custom sounds, all that stuff. AOL Instant Messenger. I used to use that on OS 9 as well. I don't think this person ever used it. Netscape Communicator, on the other hand, I have used. Navigator is what eventually became Mozilla and Firefox that we know today. Communicator came after that split. Yeah, Netscape Communicator was more of a full suite, whereas Navigator was just the browser. We have QuickTime, which is version 4. Picture viewer, uh, video player, and updater. Let's take a look at the sample movie. <laughs> wow. That fell on its face. Let's not look at the sample movie then. This install is a bit screwed and old, so we're kind of doing this as we go along. The Apple Audio CD Player. Some of you might remember this if you grew up like I did. Oh, yeah, look at that CD player. It even has the tray right there. It has the little volume thing. Normal shuffle program. You open up that tray and you usually get a list of tracks or something. Good times, man. Kid Works 2 looks like some kind of kid's program. Let's see what it is. This totally gives away that this computer was owned and used by a teacher of some kind. I'm guessing that this person really liked wood carving and was a teacher. <laughs> Basically, they were just they were a pretty simple person. And I think it was a computer used by two people. Maybe the woman was the teacher and the guy was the wood carver and the guy looking at online on those um, sites. So Let's see what this game is all about. Looks exact. It looks pretty much like your typical ed edutainment fair of the '90s. You can click on things and interact with the screen, which of course stimulates kids into uh, paying attention. I suppose. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's very simple. It's perf This stuff was perfect for kids because it was very simple. Very basic program. That one wasn't even moving, it was just a sound. It's your hockey stick. Uh, I let's see what the clock does. <laughs> what about this tape recorder? That looks interesting. Ah, interesting. Interesting. So, story player. That's very odd. So it looks like this is a suite of programs for kids. Okay, it looks like here that you, uh, This looks very much like a uh, uh, type of thing where you learn to read and learn to write. Oh, it's painfully slow. I can't even type properly. There you go. So this is definitely an educational tool of some type that the teacher and the family use. Do you want to take this story? No. So that's edutainment software that's on here. Are you sure you want to quit? Yes. Oh, yes. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Okay. Crossword wizard. 
and welcome to the Kaiser's Crossword Wizard. Okay, ready, made possible. And then all the solve the puzzle. Looks like a very old piece of Mac software, so you just solve the crossword puzzle. I'm not going to do that on camera because there's too much. Goodbye. Because there's too much to do. Goodbye. Earthlink. Oh yeah, Earthlink was a, um, an ISP back in the day, dial-up ISP, um, along with AOL and you know all the other ones. Earthlink was pretty popular on the Mac. Mahjong Parlor. Somebody liked playing Mahjong. Uh, Solitaire. Somebody had Solitaire installed on here. Ace the Card Shark presents <laughs> cards. Looks like it was shareware software as well, so pretty typical uh, pretty typical solitaire game, looks like. And I'm not doing so hot anyway. <laughs> yeah, but it's solitaire, it's Klondike Solit no Yukon Solitaire rather. It's called Solitaire Till Dawn. Now Appleworks is installed in here. This is something that I used to use. I also used Clarisworks back in the day. AppleWorks 6, I actually have a CD of. One for Mac OS 10 and one for Mac OS 9. This was released in about, looks like 2002, as a replacement for Clarisworks. And AppleWorks eventually developed into iWork, where you have pages, numbers, and keynote today. So, this goes back pretty far. I used Clarisworks back in 1997 when I first got this machine. Lexar Media. I don't have any of that. I don't know why it wants that. So let's take a look at the uh, word processing. Oh yeah, I used to use this. Especially with the Helvetica font. So let's do 72 points for the heck of it. have Helvetica. Uh, what other fonts did they give you? Fonts like Chicago. This is an iconic font. Chicago. You, I used to see this on the Mac all the time. And to me, this looked like an old school font. I really like Chicago. Of course, there was Courier and uh, a bunch of other fonts. Tu <laughs> this font is called Tubular. <laughs> That's awesome. There is a font called Tubular. <laughs> tubular, man! That's awesome. Tubular should be a font that we should still have today. SimCity 2000 collection's on here, which is kind of cool. Let's see if it runs. It does! Let's get rid of the toolbar there. MIDI music that you can typically hear. Let's load a scenario. How about an Atlanta UFO invasion? Why not, right? But this is something that you would typically use a computer like this for. If you owned a Mac back in the day. You'd have, you'd mostly have your work done on a computer like this, as you would in the 90s, but you'd also have games like SimCity 2000 around to play with. And of course on OS, on the classic Mac OS, they had games like Marathon, made by Bungie, which a lot of the ele which a lot of elements made in elements from that game made it into Halo, so that's pretty cool. Destroying the city. So that's essentially what you would uh, experience on a computer like this. I had SimCity 2000 at one point. I also had Age of Empires and games like that. I don't think they were on the Mac though, if I remember. I think I ended up getting those in the early 2000s and playing them on my mother's uh, Dell. 
Clarisworks 5.0 is also installed in here, which is the precursor to AppleWorks. This one's from 1997, so it dates the machine pretty well. But it has all the same sort of functionality that uh, AppleWorks did. See, it looks pretty much the same, except this toolbar up here is just a mess of buttons. <laughs> Yeah, I used to use Claris Works. I used Claris Works 3.5 back in the days that I would use a Power Mac 6500 movie player. Okay. That's unusual. Alright. Uh, Tiger Technologies. Ah, this is a fun one. You guys want to see something wacky that you want to see you want to see why the old Max had personality. This here should tell you why. Okay, you guys want to see something funny that just I th this this was hilarious when I first saw it. I played this machine a little bit before we got to, before we really dug into this. And uh, there's a program on here called Holiday Lights. I figure it's that time of year. You know, it's Christmas. We need to uh, we need to spruce things up. So. Let's put the most Christmas themed, let's have the most Christmas themed screensaver in the world. Holiday lights, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Your ears don't deceive you, that's the X Files theme. <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> it's stuff like this that gives old Max such character. The software that people would make. <laughs> Things like this would happen. And it was really, really funny. Software developers had a sense of humor back in the day. That, that, I, <laughs> that's one of the more candid moments I've ever had uh, using this computer, so... I just had to share that with you. So what else do we have? We have Sherlock 2, I'm sure you all remember that, for searching on OS 9. The National Board. Looks like we have some documents that were made in Apple Works 6. Hopefully there's nothing too incriminating in here. Looks like this is teacher stuff. Expository re writing reflection. List three things you feel you did well. List two things you would like to improve. Yeah, I remember doing stuff like that in school. Yeah, it looks like that was stuff that was done for schools or something. Crib 3000. Crib 3000. What on earth is this? Oh, Cribbage. Okay. Cribbage 3000. I see. So, somebody who was into playing board games. I liked board games back in these days, too. This also has Thinking Things on it, which is something that I used to play as a kid. So, this is nostalgic for me. This means one thing. We need to go into the ball pit and play that funky music, white boy. <laughs> Where is the iBlues button? This was this was some trippy software back in the day. This is what it was all about as a kid. 
shapes here and the shapes would actually scream when they hit each other. trippy software. <laughs> well, I bet the sound of this is insane. For everyone. This says the most silly people at the door you've ever seen. <laughs> How simply marvelous. Cripple. I like purple and big eyes. Please. That voiceover, man, that's just. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Look at the choppiness. Oh, darling, thank you. That caricature of a rich old woman is beautiful. <laughs> well, open for business with scribbles to go. I like yellow and curly hair, please. Cheerio. Stereotypical as all can be. Three minutes to go, store. Hey there. I like purple and spots and straight hair, please. The most Irish dude on the planet. Perfect. <laughs> There's one guy in particular I really want to show you, so I'm just waiting for him. Thanks and the luck of the Irish be with you. That's so stereotypical, it hurts. There's one guy in here that's so 90s that I just have to show it, though. There's one guy in this piece of software that is so 90s and such a throwback that I just have to show it. It's really funny. Hi. Any scribbles in the shop? I like stripes and straight hair. Pretty please with the cherry on top? Doesn't that remind you of Patrick from Spongebob, even though it's supposed to obviously be like the giant from Jack and the Beanstalk or something? That's, that, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I need stripes and straight hair. Uh, that fripple is not exactly what the customer wants. Yeah, well, a customer can...
Thanks a lot. See you later, alligator. <laughs> That's so silly. I want the triples. I like stripes and curly hair. Please. Mother Russia. <laughs> Thanks a lot to you. Bye. I love that. Thanks a lot to you. The stereotypes in this are fantastic. Whoa, ripples to go. I'm like spots and sunglasses. Please. Yeah, I love that guy. <laughs> That is so 90s, it's awesome. <laughs> this is great. Later, dude. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, that's the one part of this I had. Goodbye, and please come again to visit the Pribbles. That's one thing I had to show you. While this software's on here, you might as well take advantage of it, right? I mean, this is Christmas. It's time to just have some fun. Alright, so what else we got? We've got the Writing Center. Now, that is a piece of software I did use as a kid, I'm pretty sure. I think I had it on a CD. Some of them have been lost over time, but... <laughs> How great of an intro song is that? That's awesome. So what do we want to write? A report or a letter? Without a heading. Looks like a very simple text editor. I don't know if kids would use this. I, guess, I think kids would use this. I think what I had actually was the writing machine, not the writing center. Ah. Uh, the machine is frozen, folks. Control Command Power to reset this machine. Oh yeah, this thing is not happy. <laughs> it's got to verify the hard drive and run disk first aid. I used to see that when my computer would uh, just kind of conk out. Ah, the memories, man, the memories. Okay, we're not going to open the writing center again because that froze the froze the machine. So we saw a little bit of it. It's basically a text editor. So Spin Doctor. This looks like a pinball game. Maybe not. Maybe this is a puzzle game. Let's try it. Doctor on duty. Well, it's L Mall 3, of course. You're the spinning light board. Your mission is to grab the rotating gold dot, hold the command key to swing. Wait a minute, what? I see. Use the command key to hold on to this. Yeah, I beat the level. That's a neat game. It's a pretty neat game. Quite a neat game. So what do we got in here? Spectre Challenger. Not sure what this is. Might be a space shooter. Guess it sounds like one. What is this? Oh wow. <laughs> oh this is 3D. Look at that, it's 3D. Reminds me of Cybermorph. Mm -hmm. 
This reminds me of Cybermorph on the Atari Jaguar. Mm -hmm. So I need to quit because that's just. Uh, I mean, for the time, I guess that's kind of normal, but. Kids samplers. So it looks like they were demoing software for kids. Hello Kitty Piano. Piano. Piano? Hello Kitty Piano. <laughs> Lemmings Minigame. Peter Pan. Flying Colors. EA Kids Art Center. Lol. E. Ugh. EA. <laughs> grade book. Now, this is definitely the sign that a teacher was in here. Let's look at the grade book from 1999 and 2000. Grade book software. Called Grade Pro, it looks like. Oh no, it looks like a couple people failed! That, and they withdrew. Nice. Somebody got a D. A lot of people got A's. People either got A's or failed in this grade book, it looks like. Yeah, that's, uh... Yeah, there you go. That's grade book software, so this was definitely used by a teacher. Now, uh, what else do we have in the Macintosh folder? We have something called Color It 3.0. I'm going to guess this is an illustration program of some sort, obviously. Yeah, it looks similar to Adobe Illustrator or something like that. Probably more on a much more simple scale. But cross cards. Now, what is this? Wow, that face. Looks like another Bye -bye. looks like another puzzle game type of thing. It's a shareware game. Your shareware order. Let's hope this doesn't have anything incriminating in it. Well, this guy has name and name and address on there, so I'm gonna block that. <laughs> but looks like the guy paid about fifteen dollars for this game. Reasonable, I would say. Deer hunter. So this guy liked to hunt deer, I guess. <laughs> I think this was an arcade game back in the day. I remember seeing arcade cabinets where you had an actual gun. Okay, let's go hunting. Yeah, let's go hunting, man. Ugh. Let's use a shotgun, because shotguns are cool. Yeah, this is a bit like a simulator game from back in the day. Looks like it takes some time to play it, but it almost looks like an arcade conversion, but not. What's in the downloads folder? Poker, Robo War, Russian Roulette 1.1.1. 1. 1. 1. What in the world is this? 1988. Oh, 1992. That's when this is from. It looks like... Oh, it's a puzzle game. I got somebody. That's actually a neat puzzle game. I like that. And it froze again. This, this computer is really stable, isn't it? Well, okay, so there were games... Like Russian Roulette, which made the machine freeze for some reason. Uh, what else we got? Scrambler, which I guess is a word scrambler, I would, I would guess. Let's see. The dot .sit file, as you can see right there. That's what the, uh, that's what stuff it was for. Oh, it's a hypercard game. Hypercard was interesting. Strip Mac, what is this? What is this? Let's see if I can show this on video or not. Cool. 
cool music. Let's do a new game. Two people. Please include what items of clothing you are wearing. Okay. Jeans. Shirt. Uh, you can even choose your sexual orientation. Straight, bisexual, or gay. Well, obviously I'm going to choose bisexual. Because that's what I am. Let's do me. <laughs> Alright, I'm in jeans and a shirt. At the moment. T-shirt, actually. Let's do T-shirt. Player two will be female. We will name her... Julie, because it's the first name that popped into my head. Okay, bikini pants, bikini top. Bra. Let's just put ridiculous items on this one. Dress. Fannies. And we will make her straight, because why not? Well, let's see. You've lost this trick. Sell an item of clothing, take a punishment. Let's do take a punishment. You have one minute in which to think of a new punishment card for strip back. Yeah, it looks like some sort of party game. That's kind of funny. Uh, that's that. That's pretty hilarious. Stunt copter. That looks neat. Let's give that a shot. Looks like an old Mac game from the 80s or something. Yep, this is from the 80s. Oh no. See if I can get it down into the... I did it. Oh, I dropped it onto the horse. <laughs> That's an old 80s Mac game for sure. Tecma slots. Looks like we got some gambling. Play slots. got three cherries. Yeah, man. So they got slot games on here. Man, these people had some cool software. Triple Yahtzee, UHS slash Mac. I don't know what that is. Universal Hint System. No idea what that is. Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune was on here. I bet this is the 80s version. Wheel of Fortune. No, it's the 1992 version. Entertainment puzzles. Oh, it looks like it's not. Looks like that puzzle file is broken. Let's do a new game. Blah. Make that the Mac, make that the Mac as well. Oh, this looks like it's from the black and white Mac days. Look at that. So you could probably play this on an 80s Mac. Definitely not like the DOS version. Christmas tree folder. 1992 UCLA intervention program. So it looks like you can just... Decorated tree. That's festive. Let's do it. Let's make a stupid looking face. I don't know what that's supposed to be. But there you go. That's festive. <laughs> what else we got? Enigma 1.0. 
what on earth is this? Wow. Shall we play a game? Rosetta engaged. <laughs> That's some sort of game where you like crack a code. Fetch 3.0. What is this? Ah, uh, fetch is. Fetch looks like it is a an FTP client or something. Yeah, FTP.dartmouth.edu. So maybe they work for Dartmouth. Who knows? University of Michigan Services, Dartmouth Services. That might tell you where this came from. We have hearts, Omega Quick Sync, Quick Disk, wow. Jumpstart LG ABCs. This ought to be entertaining. Oh, I don't have the CD ROM, so maybe not. Maybe that won't be as entertaining as I thought it would be. Ah, Print Shop Deluxe. Let's take a look at that. Let's make a greeting card. It is Christmas, so let's do... Christmas trees. Yay! So this program will allow you to make your own Christmas cards and print them out. That's kind of nice. I've seen B Bishop PCM do videos on stuff similar to this on um, the Apple II, I believe. I think you could get the print shop for that or something similar. But this, the print shop's deluxe on here also allows to do that. Can you believe it? This computer has reversing! And I have no clue how to play it. And of course it has that piano thing from Pink Floyd's Echoes, that's a bit strange. Shall we play a game? Yes, let's play a game. I have no clue how to play this. Like at all. It look it man, I don't know. Oh, come on. Man, I don't know how to do this. Ah, I did something. I did something. Looks like a fairly good version of the game. I just don't have a clue how to play it. <laughs> the sound folder. Now there's some interesting stuff in here. Here's a sound called Shutdown. Don't shut me down. <laughs> Bullwinkle sounds. Yeah, I don't know what exactly to open these with. Could try simple text, I guess. The right-click menu would, uh, you know, do do a thing. Yeah, I'll have to figure that out. It's just Rocky and Bullwinkle noises. Moose and Squirrel will definitely be Boris and Natasha going Moose and Squirrel. Clock chimes. How about the uh, Westminster gong? Zero, zero after.
boom sounds. Bullet ricochet, honk, help, dog barks, woman laughs, beep beep. Looks like there's just a bunch of random stuff in here. There's another folder called sounds, rather than just sound. This ought to have some good stuff in it. No, sir, I didn't like it. <laughs> Parental guidance is suggested. Awesome. Oh, we're not even at the top of the folder. Let's go to the top. Good night. That's from Aeros. That's an Aerosmith thing. All kids love log. Do 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 do. <laughs> oh, alrighty then. I know what this is. Alrighty then. It's the nineties. It's definitely the nineties, man. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> oh, there's a Boomhauer clip. Yeah, man, I'll tell you what, that dang old internet, man, you just go on there and point and click, get in there and talk about www.com, and you got them that naked chicks on there, man, you go click, 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 it's real easy, man. <laughs> More boom, Howard. Yeah, man, them Chinese, man, you can't understand that old word they say, man, they just try to listen to them, the whole upside down and whatnot. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> cracking toast. Not cracking toast, Grummy. Oh, it's Crumb. It's Wallace and Grum. Curly laugh. <laughs> Fiery ass. What's this? No, Mr. Yeah. Whenever I'm in a cabin in the woods, the first thing I do is just rip off my top and start dancing the frug. I can't take it. What? I can't take it. What's well, Dan? You want to know what I think? What? Yeah, about that. <laughs> Oh wow! This is this, this takes me back. Oh my God! It's your kitty! You bastard! Woo woo! Oh my God! It killed Kitty! You bastard! <laughs> Whoa, dude! How do you have sex with a chicken? Oh uh, boys, you move along. This isn't for young eyes to see. <laughs> I remember that episode. No, sir. I didn't like it. <laughs> Parental guidance is suggested. Possum. Goodbye, cruel wild. Goodbye, cruel wild. Oh, this has red and stimpy stuff on it. What are you trying to do? Make a pill? <laughs> That's really low quality. Wallace and Gromit, of course. These are some random sound effects, I'll tell you what. These are some very random sound effects. <laughs> Sometimes that's just the whole fun of finding an old computer. You find stuff like this you just never thought that you would ever see. Stratavision 3D. What on earth is this? Nineteen ninety five software. Ah, the references file is gone. That sucks. Easy Grade Pro three five six. So here's the here's some grades from two thousand three and two thousand four. So maybe this computer was used until two thousand four. The grade so the grading software is definitely from the year 2000 or like 99 or something. Though. Looks like kid. Looks like a couple kids in this. Somebody in this class got a 19.5 percent on their grade, an F. 
That's in science, too. That's pretty sad. Anyway, <laughs> I don't want to make a backup copy. I don't even want to touch somebody else's grade book. So, yeah. There's one folder we forgot to look at. And it holds a bit of significance. Of course, it looks like there's some antivirus stuff in the utilities folder here. Disk copy, live update, Norton antivirus, virus scan, disk first aid, all that stuff. Well, Peter Norton is the icon. Yeah. That's about all I can show you on this computer. This is what came on the computer. Fetch is apparently still running. But this is what came on the computer. <laughs> Some amusing stuff. Mac OS 9.1. Quite, quite a plethora of stuff on here. So, yeah, I thought that'd be fun to check out. What I plan to do with this computer in the future is to get an eight, working 8.5 disk and get 8.6 running on this computer. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to replace the hard drive yet. Um, it still works, so I should probably just leave it alone, to be honest with you. Um, it's going to get a new battery, um, and yeah, that's about it. I'll probably make videos of software on this computer and others like it in the future. Uh, there's quite a few things I'd like to uh, go over with it, so that's been a Christmas look at my childhood computer and the fun stuff that happened to be on it when I bought it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and have a good one, everybody. Ciao, and Merry Christmas.